thanks for coming back. Uh, this week we're going to be showing you how to lay a reinforced concrete floor. Um, we're also going to be showing you the finished chicken coop and the uh, fence surrounding it, so the new area basically. And uh, we're also going to be showing you a bit of a reveal on our bathroom now it's finished. Okay, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate. Uh, this is a really bar of different sizes, just stuff I had hanging around. I don't really need it, but um, I'm just going to show you how to how to tie rebar just uh, in case you need to do it in the future. So basically you can do what they call a hairpin tie. This is some um, stainless steel tying wire used on bridge decks and stuff. Tying wire is, is uh, special in the fact that it's been annealed so it's soft and you can twist it and it won't break. So for a hairpin tie you go underneath the bottom bar, over the top one, back underneath and then you form a twist like so, and you pull it tight. There. These are just known as nits, they're end cutting pliers actually, um, available everywhere. The tying wire available in most builders' merchants. And another type of tie, <coughs> it's just a slash tie, so you basically it's just slash across on a diagonal. Same difference. I'll do one the other way. So this is the area where our bread oven was. Um, underneath there, there was no floor for some reason. Uh, so they they built a ring of uh, blocks on the outside edges and then filled this with soil. So this is a fairly solid. The ground is fairly solid, but to stop moisture coming up from the ground, so let's pretend this was a, the base of your barn to be uh, refurbished or whatever, you need to put plastic down to stop rising damp coming up through the floor. Okay, so just a, a sheet of plastic. So this is a <laughs> roughly put together precast piece of mesh. It could be a piece of mesh or anything. I just had some leftover bar. Um, and we need to lay this on top of the plastic. Yeah. You just wait <laughs> for me to do that. Would be this. You don't want to make any holes in the plastic. So at the moment the mesh is just on the plastic. What we need to do is lift the mesh up. So it's within the middle of the concrete, yeah? If it's just on the floor and the concrete goes on top, the mesh is actually doing nothing. It adds no strength to the concrete at all. So what I've got is four of these granite blocks. I've seen these before. <coughs> and we'll put them underneath the bars to lift them up and give space for the concrete underneath. Yeah, so now we can fill it with concrete up to this level, which is what we're going to do now. I'm going to do a mix of three aggregate, two coarse sand, one cement. Just a standard mix for, for general concrete. Three aggregate, two sand, one cement. Uh, so if you notice I'm limping a little bit, um, I have really bad sciatica at the moment, um, but then we have to put videos out, so as they say, the show must go on.
So just a quick explanation why you put reinforcing bars in concrete. Uh, it makes it many, many, many times stronger. And the reason steel is used instead of anything else is because steel expands and contracts at exactly the same rate as concrete expands and contracts. So the two are sort of uh, have a symbiotic relationship and um, you don't get any cracks with, with this. So it's basically the same as the concrete you put in the foundations for the chicken coop. But um, just when you go on the edges, make sure you keep the concrete, uh, concrete, uh, keep the plastic up out the concrete, so you keep that nice um, waterproof membrane. Two more, maybe. Because it's a bit low. Yeah. It's always best to have a little bit too much concrete than to have not enough. Um, but always make sure you have, if you have some excess, uh, you know, you have somewhere where you can use it, um, then you have no waste. I've used the excess we had in the, the deeper parts of the calzada, which was in last week's video. Why it was floating. Why where's my bit of wood? Blown into the aggregate, isn't it? <coughs> yeah.
Так. So as you can see, all the water is coming to the surface because it's a wood in my aggregate, I'm afraid, and leaves. <laughs> All the water is coming to the surface because with the plastic it's got nowhere to go. So uh, it just needs to dry off in the atmosphere now. Eventually, because this floor will be probably tiled, that's a posh workshop, but yeah. Um, the, the, the top finish doesn't really matter as long as it's level and flat, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. So this will be dry in the morning, uh, all that remains is to cut the plastic off at the ground level and it's finished. Um, realistically the rest of the floor in the workshop here, the old floor has never had a plastic sheet. I just put this down for, for demonstration purposes so, um, so now you guys can go and build your own reinforced concrete slab. So it's the next day now, concrete's nice and hard-ish, <laughs> um, I'm just going to strip the, the plastic off so you can see the finished product.
So there you have it, one uh, finished reinforced concrete slab, really easy stuff. So uh, we've got some still shots coming up of this was the original bedroom, this was a bedroom door, yeah, um, and this was a solid wall here, which is nearly two foot thick granite wall, which we took out to make access to the bedrooms. This is the other side of where I was just standing, showing the granite wall, and then basically nearly demolished. So um, there was a lot of mess and muck to take out. And that's the finished product. We concreted the inside faces of the wall. So this is the bathroom. Uh, so in the still shot that's coming up, hang on. In the still shot that's coming up, uh, you'll see th this is where all that is green and water running down the wall here. The reason there was so much water uh, running into the room was the fact that the this area of the roof had barely any roof tiles on it all collapsed and uh, just rain would just come inside and the floor as you see now was damp we just had a shower but when we had heavy rain it would basically fill the floor up to about two or three inches of, of water yeah um, so we slightly improved it so here we go uh, black marble style tiles um, up here, I've built a skylight through the ceiling so we can have some natural light. The skylight looks a bit funny at the minute because it's got a piece of perspex over it just to so it sort of deflect some of the sun during the summer. That'll be gone soon. That's a big spider plant there. And then I built, I built a towel rack here for Angie's hotel style towels. And then um, this is an old Salter Scales that we uh, that we brought over from the UK. We've had them for ages, um, waiting waiting to buy a property that they would look suitable in. And we've used these Portuguese style tiles to go just to give some colour highlights around the edges, around the middle, and especially around the, the bottom of the bath. It's a jacuzzi bath that we bought second hand from Facebook Marketplace and we paid I think 100 euros for it. And here's the room without light just to show how much light we get from natural light we get from the skylight because this wall here is again two foot thick granite and I thought it'd be easier to go through the roof than through the wall to put a window in. This this wall here is, we haven't changed it much, this was the original render plaster that was on the bedroom wall when we got here, so I thought this is the only room in the house which we've left original, but just painted it. So that the, uh, here where we've got the shelves was the original um, doorway through to the bedroom. So you had to go through one bedroom and there's another bedroom. So you had to go through one bedroom to get to the other bedroom. And there's a, an ensuite there which we'll be showing you later on. Here's a quick shot of where we used Tijolo to, to block up the doorway after we'd opened the new doorway through the granite wall. And here we are, this is the new chicken run in our old vegetable garden, there's still a few things growing, we've got a courgette there and a run of beans, tomatoes etc. But they're nearly all finished so the chickens are going to have a whale of a time in this area now. They've got about an acre at the moment um, and, and when we, sorry they've got about half an acre, when we take the electric fence up which is essential to keep them safe. Uh, they'll have about an acre and a half. So this is the finished chicken coop uh, clad with the cheap timber that we had from the local build, uh, local sawmill. Uh, the window with a with a tiled sill um, and this is the fence, electric fence that goes all the way around. The green netting and the orange netting 
is to keep the chicks in and not predators out. The electric fence is on the outside of this. Um, the reason being that the tiny little chicks like this, this one here, just step through the electric fence. They do not get affected by the electric at all because they have scales on their legs and feathers. Uh, unless they're wet, soaking wet through, electric fence does not even affect the chickens whatsoever. So um, the, the electric fence is just to keep predators out uh, as we, we know for a fact that dogs um, won't even approach it. Our dogs especially, uh, they've all had a shock once and don't want to shock anymore. A uh, quick shot of the inside of the, I shut the door just now, but a quick shot of the inside of the finished chicken house. So I've made some perches out of cork oak and uh, they love it because cork oak is soft on their feet and um, yeah. So basically the new the new chicken house is for about a dozen to 14 chickens and the, as you can see in the background here, the portable one is for about 10 to 12. So and that we don't intend having any more chickens than that. Are you? So, and just, well, we're here just picking a few olives uh, for brining. As you can see, there's quite a few on the tree. And I've been out here all day, swimming around and mowing around all the olive trees because next week it's going to be our we're going to show you our olive harvest thanks for watching guys um, next week we're going to show you some of our olive harvest uh, the dogs are going mental here and um, Thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing, and see you next week. Bye! Bye. Lovely boy. Hey. Billy, get Boris. So these are a few of our select olives for brining. Uh, the the type is a uh, Cordeville, um, and we'll brine them for a long, long time. So we will have olives for eating next year. Bit of an extra here guys, this uh, artwork is from one of our subscribers, Dennis Brooks. Um, it's just fabulous stuff and I uh, just thought before I could incorporate it into um, our starting title, uh, just like give you a quick glance of um, his work and uh, just he's available. You can get hold of him if you type into Google search. Dennis Brooks on Behance, uh, he's a graphic designer and by the looks of what he does, he's great. So um, 
Yeah, it's a big shout out for Dennis. Thank you, mate. Love you.